This is the BBC Home Service. Tommy Good! Bravo! Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, no. Thank you, gentlemen, Tommy for good. praising my announcing. Yes, yes. But I was nearly doing my duty in upholding the final traditions of my alma mater, the Home Service. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well done. Well done. Yes, well done. yes, indeed. Well done. The Home Service provides us with the best program. Always. Yes. Therefore, it is with heavy heart I announce one of the worst. <laughs> Mr. Greenslade, stop reading that Radio Times. Pull up your bloomers and tell England. All right. England, I'm pulling up my bloomers. <laughs> Thank you, Greensladers. Put away those cameras, because now the goons are about to embark on a strange story entitled The Lost Music of Purdom. <laughs> Neddy Seagoon. You've possibly seen my name in the mirror. It reads, New Guy, Iden New Guy. <laughs> in the year 1900 in Stanton Screen, I was employed at the Norwich Castle Museum as a translator of ancient manuscript. My keeper was a certain Mr. Roger Fudgenuckle. Mar Neddy, watch all for today. What's the time? <sighs> Three minutes to midnight. Oh, well, might as well have an early night then, eh, Neddy? Ah, <laughs> uh, shut up, you mean old bounder. <laughs> Deaf as a coot. <laughs> Good night, Neddy. Good night, you bald old bath bun. <laughs> Good night. Oh, Neddy. Yes? I just thought to tell you, one day you're going to be a bald old bath bun, too. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Is that the Norwich Castle Museum? Yes. I must ask you to speak louder. Why? I haven't got a phone. <laughs> Can't you find a phone box? I don't think they've got one round here. Why? Where are you? On top of a bus. <laughs> what are you doing up there? I wanted to smoke. <laughs> Why, what do you want? A match, please. Yes, ma'am. Here. Ah, mercy, mon ami. I'm speaking on behalf of the famous London antique dealer, the Honorable Great Fight Thin. He's looking for a bright assistant. The Honorable Hercules Great Fight Thin? Why, he was a famous London antique dealer who was looking for a bright assistant. <laughs> what wage is he offering? Shall we say X pounds? I accept! <laughs> That's more than I ever got here. <laughs> Where shall I meet you? Wherever you like. Right, see you there. Good. Now, uh, what time? I'll leave that to you. Splendid. Don't be late. Goodbye. Who was that, Neddy? Uh, I forgot to ask. Hello, 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 hello. Yes, yes. I forgot to ask your name. I'm sorry, I can't tell you. Why not? I've hung up. <laughs> However, why what about it? What's yours? Seagoon. Till we meet then, our reservoir. Well, Mr. Fudgenuckle, I'm handing in my notice. Oh, dear laddie, just because you resign, don't think Norwich Museum's going to fall down. Very well. I resign! <laughs> right now. <laughs> Hands up all those who thought the museum was going to fall down. Hey, come along. Come along, it's you. Right. I'll take a hundred lines. I must not try and guess the end of Goon Show Gags. <laughs> That is the Tower of Pisa. <laughs> Carry on, Mr. Greenslade. Give me the old chat down to your wallet. We take up the story where Neddy Seagoon kneecaps meets the mysterious phone caller in London, the well-known place. Ah, good evening. I'm sorry I'm late. I accept your apple gobbledy. <laughs> now then, follow me into this highly mysterious house. <laughs> hmm? Now, Neddy, follow me into this highly mysterious room. Good evening, gentlemen. Ah, oh, Mr. Seagoon. How do you know? Throat. Yes. Uh, take Mr. Seagoon's hat and burn it. Right. <laughs> now, this is the Honorable Gritpipe Thin. 
He stood warming himself in front of the big open fire with his big open trousers. Around the room were hung mummified trams, ancient scrolls, scripts, parchment overcoats, and a few early stone saxophones. <laughs> Come, Ned, dear. Warm yourself for the fire. Oh, I'm Moriarty. Break open a bottle of wine. Thank you. Now, Neddy, you've been on the radio, have you? Yes, though I feel it's a dying medium. I knew a dying medium once. He got better. <laughs> uh, tell me jolly for the spirit. Yes, Neddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> the <clears throat> director of the BBC Home Service is looking for new ideas. How about suicide? Yes. <laughs> oh, ye good joke, I say. <laughs> Moriarty. Thank you. <laughs> Neddy, let me tell you a tale. Four thousand years ago, a Lebanese slave named Purdom recorded the only known music of ancient Babylon. Now, this music was lost, but has been seen recently in a certain Arab souk. What's a souk? Souk it and see. <laughs> but, um, thank you, Marajan. <laughs> Let Greenstead explain what I yes, want to tell you. May I explain that the BBC Home Service are offering fifty pounds for the recovery of this last manuscript of Purdon. Fifty pounds or a life subscription to the Radio Times. <laughs> and while Mr. Seagoon is deciding which of these offers to accept, a fine old English gentleman, Max Gelbray, will play a frozen Arab sock from the waist down. The highly esteemed Goon Show, Part the Second in which Ned Seagoon travels to foreign climes in search of the last papyrus. Mesopotamia, city of filth. <laughs> As I stepped down the gangplank at Abadan, I was greeted by a mysterious Arab. Here are you, Ned Seagoon. <laughs> Only by name. Follow me, mate. <laughs> I followed him for three weeks. <laughs> Unable to contain my curiosity, I asked him, Where are you taking me? Nowhere, mate. And what did you ask me to follow you? I was lonely, mate. <laughs> what? You brought me all this way for nothing? Well, you can pay me if you want to, but... <laughs> I'm a good mind to... No, 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 don't nut me, mate, don't nut me. <laughs> I'll tell you the truth, so call love a duck's truth, call stone a crow, will blimey, I will. <laughs> London and Andrew? No, Yorkshire. <laughs> You see, mate, I was bribed to lead you into this desert and leave you here to die. Leave me here to die? Well, to die or tomorrow. <laughs> I don't wish to do that. Neither do I. Who does? Well, <laughs> who put you up to this? The forces of evil. The horses of evil? Are they the horses? <laughs> who are they? Speak up so the blisters without radio tip might clearly hear the pop. The blokes names was Dr. Idle Burgers and Yucca Mottos. <laughs> They're after the lost music of Purdom. We mustn't get it before the home service. Now, how do we get out of this terrible desert? What is it? I hear horses' heaves approaching. It's lost in the desert? Yes, but how did you know? I've been listening on the radio. <laughs> I eyed the stranger closely. He was living proof that the Piltdown skull was not a hoax. <laughs> he was dressed in egg stained nightshirt, army surface boots, <laughs> and a raccoon skin trilby with a brim pulled well down over the knees. <laughs> You can laugh. You can laugh. I'm the famous Echo. Famous for what? Well, you seen the Eiffel Tower? Yes. Well, 
Let that be a lesson to you. <laughs> Wait a minute. How does the Eiffel Tower make you famous? I fell off it. Oh. <laughs> no man has ever fallen off the Eiffel Tower and lived. You call this living? <laughs> Only during the mating season. Good luck. Where do you live? Oh, and in that home over there. That's a pyramid. The place where they buried the dead. Any questions? <laughs> well, now you've exhausted your store of three-letter words. <laughs> Perhaps you'll be so kind as to give us a lift to the nearest settlement. Okay. There ain't no room in my car, but you can run behind. Thanks. That'll save walking. Oh, tight. Hi, Yep. Can I stand on the running boat? Certainly. Now, hold tight, now. Well, it's no good standing here on this running board. <laughs> Might as well follow him. I'll come with you. Mind if I come too? My time will take too. Uh, now, come on, we must get to town before sundown. You take the saxophone. Yep. Eccles, you and the piano. Oh, oh. Now, let's go. <laughs> Meantime, unknown to Sigun and the director of the home service, on a bus traveling from Oldham to Cleethorpes, a certain conversation is going on. It's in a cage, you say. Oh, it would when I bought it, you know. Uh, what kind of bird is it? Well, I'm not sure, really. You see, I got it off a sailor, you know. Oh, uh, I say. What's the colour of its plumage? Oh, you can't see it. It's covered with feathers. <laughs> Nature's wonderful, isn't it? Uh... I don't know what they'll think of next. Uh... Sailor gave it me, you know. Who oh, are? Oh, sailor. Uh, it's got a red beak at one end and a tail at the other. And? And a bird in between. <laughs> it's in between then, is it? Ah. Oh. Ah, uh, that's a good place for it, you know. Well, he seems to be happy there, you know. Well, then I wouldn't move him. I don't think I shall, really. No. You know, I had one the same build. Beak one end, tail the other, and the bird dead in between, it was. <laughs> I like that, aren't they? Uh, Funny, that, aren't they? They look lovely, too. They do they? look nice. You come to your, your time coming, you must admit. Uh, <laughs> I say, what's this I've heard about your missus? Why, well, you know, it's very funny, this. She had an operation on the kitchen table amongst all the corn pegs. No. And then, uh... Ladies and gentlemen, that conversation has nothing to do with the show. <laughs> but we thought listeners might like to hear what a couple of real idiots sounded like. <laughs> And uh, if you would like to hear four real idiots, we return you now to the music of Perdom, part the third. Lost. Sigun and company are hopelessly lost in the desert, and in a blinding sandstorm, see a light ahead. It is a little antique shop on the outskirts of Aleppo. Stop that modern eastern star rhythm singing. Please remember we're British. Uh, I've got to keep my voice in practice, Henry. My day is coming, buddy. <laughs> Look, Min, I want you to send this to Mr. Nay Master, the Bond Street Art Gallery. What is it? It's a rare uh, wine vase. Oh. Be careful with it, Min. It's worth nothing. <laughs> Me, Ellen Gore! 
Me strong, me beat man with one hand. Me kill strong, me kill him. Yes, yes, me yes, yes. Very good. Man. Yes, I want. Yes, I want. Yes, I want. Yes, I want. Ellinger, I want you to take this. Uh, Ellinger, answer, answer. Me strong, me kill a man with yes. one hand. Yes, yes. Me kill a... Answer the door, Ellinger. Answer the door. Answer the door. I know it's ringing. Why don't you answer it, Daddy? Can't when it's making all that noise. Answer the door. Answer the door. Me strong, me kill a man with one hand. Me kill a man Only in the mating view. Steady, yeah. men. Yes, buddy. I observe that this is an antique shop. Tell me, have you by any chance come across a manuscript signed Purdon? Uh-huh. Yes. What? Uh-huh. Yes, I threw it in the dustbin yesterday. Has it been emptied? Yes, they empty all Arab dustbins at City Resort. Come, Eccles, we must hurry. Okay. <laughs> We move now to Sidi Rizek, the great Arab dust heap. While Mr. Seagoon is searching for the lost manuscript, let us go over to Churchstone Prison, where Mondington Clute is waiting for us. Hello, listeners. And I'm speaking from Churchstone Prison, the new social reform prison. And standing next to me is the prison governor, Mr. Norris Lurker. Good evening, Mr. Lurker. Good evening. Grand. Mr. Lurker, this is, is it not, a prison without bars? Yes. I believe that when a man gives us his word not to escape, that's good enough for us, you know. Grand. <laughs> yes, it's good enough for us. We have no restrictions on the prisoners at all, whatsoever. Any time they like, they can walk out of her. <laughs> no bars, you know, no bars at all. Yeah. All we have is their word of honor. Yes, grand, grand. Uh, could we interview one of these honor prisoners? Certainly. <laughs> good, good. James? James? <laughs> Wilson? Sally Wilson? Hamilton. Hamilton? Charlie Brown. Willoughby? Crouch. Crouch? Okay, Bendy? Jack Hampton? Jack Hampton? Hamilton? Jack Hampton? We return now to the great Arab dust heap. Oh, 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 blimey, look at this one. Leave it alone, Eccles. Oh, oh, ah, it's no good. It's not here. There's no sign of the lost manuscript. Wait. It's just in here. What? Eccles, help me to empty it. Come on. Yay! Yeah, that in 20 years. You have 
petted me. I was keeping in a dustbin and splun. I was held out under my little nut. Little rubbish covered idiot. Foil. Here, my. I'm bin bottle. King song is in London. If you listen to the radio, you'd know that was I'm blue bottle. That's what I am. Here, come here often. Only during the mating season. Oh. Now, have you seen an ancient musical document signed, Perdum? No, my captain. I have not seen an ancient musical document signed, Perdum. Think. I have not seen an ancient musical document. <laughs> wait, wait, look, whoa. What's this I found? It's it. This is it. <laughs> the lost music of Perdum. <laughs> Eccles, let the world hear it. Oh, the lost music of Perdum. Perdum, 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 Perdum. That was The Goon Show, a recorded program featuring Peter Sellers, Harry Seacombe and Spike Milligan with the Ray Ellington Quartet and Max Geldray. The orchestra was conducted by Wally Stott, script by Spike Milligan and Eric Sykes, announcer Wallace Beasley, the program produced by Peter Eaton.